This video will look at Willaware's Blanket PO module for Microsoft Dynamics GP. We'll begin by reviewing some of the setup options for Blanket PO. The Enable Auditing checkbox turns on some change tracking in the PO settings window. The PO settings is where you will set up the control values for each blanket purchase order. We'll take a lo look a little bit later at what the auditing functionality does in the PO settings window. The default control option is set here. There are several different methods by which you can, can control a blanket purchase order. As you can see here, it's set to control the PO by cost. That means that the entire blanket is controlled by a specific dollar amount. You can also control the purchase order by quantity. When you use that option, Blanket PO converts each PO release to the base unit of measure and then adds up that quantity for all of the release lines. That total release quantity needs to be less than the PO control quantity. And then you can also control the PO by each line. So you can set it to have a uh, control cost per line, and when you do that, each control line will have its own control cost. The releases for that line need to be at or below the control cost for that line, and then the same goes with quantity. The release number label, this appears in two different locations. One is on purchase order report forms. There is a report writer function that will allow you to add the PO release number onto existing uh, modified PO forms and here's an example of what it would look like. It also works together with this checkbox down here on the bottom of the window. When you mark this, Blanket PO will add the release number into the PO line item description field. So you can see that in the smart list window behind the setup here where it says release number one and release number two. The nice thing about adding the release number into the PO line item description is that the release number then automatically shows up on all reports and inquiries and windows in GP that look at the PO lines. The last important setup option to uh, take a look at here on this window is the control line increment. You can see that the control line increment is 1000 and that it's locked. Once you set it and create a blanket purchase order, as soon as you create that first blanket PO, it will lock the control line increment. The control line increment, you need to consider how to set this given a restriction in the Great Plains purchase order. And that restriction is that, that the PO can only have a little over 32,000 lines. So if you use a control line increment of 1,000, that means that you'll have 999 releases for each control line. But that also means that you can only have 32 control lines. So there's an interaction between the control line increment and the number of releases that you can have and the total number of control lines that you can have. So uh, it's common to set this somewhere between 100. So the control line increment of 100, then 200, then 300. That gives you 99 releases per control line or up to a thousand if you expect to have a lot of releases. But it just needs to be done with an understanding that the larger that control line increment, the fewer number of control lines you will have. Blanket PO also has user level security on the different Blanket PO functions. So you can set security and actually you have to set security on the ability to create a blanket. Now, so that's access to the PO settings window. Users, have ac users who have access to PO settings will have the ability to create a new blanket PO and set the control values. You can also control which users have the ability to add or edit control lines. And you can control who can add or edit individual PO releases.
So let's take a look at blanket purchase orders in action. You get to the blanket purchase order window by opening up the regular GP purchase order entry window and then navigating to additional and selecting this blanket PO option. You can also switch into blanket PO mode just by pressing control O. Creating a blanket purchase order begins just like creating any other purchase order. You fill out the top fields on the window. And then the next step is to set the blanket purchase order settings. The options that you have available on the actions button, so the blanket settings and the blanket release, are controlled by the security setup that we looked at earlier. And in fact, also this blanket PO option itself is controlled by those settings. If you don't have security access to any of the blanket PO functionality, then you won't even see this option on the window. So if you don't have the ability to access the PO settings window or to add control lines or to add releases, that effectively means you don't have access to blanket purchase orders, so the blanket PO option doesn't show up. The blanket PO settings window is where you set the control values for the purchase order. In this case, we've set this PO to have a control by cost and entered the cost of $15,000. Once we start entering releases, this window will also show the release totals on the, on the blanket purchase order. If you have a previous blanket purchase order with this vendor and you want to record it and have it show up on reports, you can put that into the previous PO number field. If the blanket PO is covered with a contract with that vendor, you can enter the contract number here. All of the information that appears on this PO settings window can be added to the existing GP PO re report forms by using a uh, report writer function that blanket purchase order provides. The contract end date affects um, uh, controls how long the blanket purchase order will be active. So in this case, on August 2nd, 2017, you will no longer be able to create new releases on the blanket. Each release can also be controlled by these minimum cost and quantity fields. If the value is left blank, then no control is applied when creating the, uh, when creating the release. So in this case, the quantity doesn't make any difference. You can create a release for any quantity, but the release has to have a cost of at least $500. You can also control what item numbers can be added as control lines onto the blanket purchase order. So if you recall from setup, we enabled auditing. This pop-up dialog box is part of that auditing functionality. It's asking us for a reason for changing this window. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to say demo. But if you failed to provide a reason, if you left this blank and clicked OK, OK or click cancel, then it would not allow you to make this change. So once you enable auditing, you have to provide a reason description for the change that you're making. Once you do that, the, the auditing functionality takes a before and after snapshot of what the data was and what it was changed to, who did it, and the time and date. So there's a couple ways of adding items to the uh, blanket controls. So you can add them manually, as I just did here. <clears throat> and then it also has the ability to read items from a smart list. And the way it does that let me just bring up a smart list here. So you can create any smart list favorite. The only requirement is that the first column contains item numbers. And when the import function runs, it's going to check this value against the item master and make sure that it actually is an item number. If it doesn't exist, it'll warn you and, and it will stop. So if I had these columns switched around and item description was the first column, the first thing it would read would be green phone, 
green phone doesn't exist as an item number, so it would uh, it would warn me that they, that it can't bring that in. So you bring up your smart list, display the favorite that you want to use to bring in your control items, click Add Smart List Items, say Yes. Again, we have it's asking us for a reason for the change, and we'll say Demo, and then it reads them all into the PO control settings. So next we'll take a look at adding control lines and release lines and working with those release lines and doing PO receipts. Okay, so we have a blanket PO. We already have a few control lines on it. Adding a control line is just like adding a line to any other purchase order. In this case, we want to add 32 ST RAM. And see when we try to select that item, we get a warning that blanket settings do not allow this item. And as you see, you can't get past it. So your only option there is to clear it. This goes back to the PO settings that we were looking at earlier. So this PO only has the um, only allows these three items. Since we're trying to enter an item that isn't allowed, and we're getting that warning message. So we'll add 32 ST RAM to it. This dialog box here that's popping up, this is part of the auditing that we looked at earlier. Because we've enabled auditing, it's, requir it's requiring that we give it a description or a reason for the change that we're making. If we fail to provide a reason, if we just leave this blank and click OK, or if we click Cancel, it will not allow the change that we're trying to make, and it'll roll back that change. Okay, so now we've added 32 SD RAM on there. From here, this is just normal GP functionality. It's telling us it's not assigned as a vendor item. One of the differences with a control line compared to a regular purchase order is that when you are using a blanket that, uh, that is controlled by, by a PO header value, so in this case, our PO has got a uh, PO header level control on cost, $15,000. When you're using one of those PO header controls, the quantity on the PO line and the cost can be considered more as default values. When you create a release, which we'll look at in just a second here, the quantity ordered in the unit cost from the control line will appear as defaults on the release, but you can change them on the release. So you can really leave these as anything you want. You can set it as one or set it as two. If there's a default value that makes sense, you can enter that here. Okay, so we just added 32 SD RAM as a new control line. Then we go into the blanket release window. Over on the left hand side here, you can see that it's showing us all of our control lines. The lines with a plus next to them already have releases. So you can see 128 SD RAM has four releases. 256 SD RAM has one release. There are a couple of lines here, a couple of these releases under 128 ST RAM. This one has already been received, so there's a shipment that's been recorded, but it hasn't been invoiced. This line has been both shipped and received. You can drill into the receipts. From here, if you double click, it takes you into the PO document inquiry window, and then you can zoom directly to the receipt. To add a new release line, you click on the control line over on this side of the window, and you can see that the control line information shows up over here. And then you enter the quantity, the location that you want it to ship to, the required date, and cost. To add it to a release, click this checkbox, and then it shows up down in the bottom part of the window. To add additional items to a release, so we'll come over here, we'll create another planned release for 32x IDE. And if you mark that, that also shows up down here on the bottom. 
If we try to get out of the window at this point, it'll give us a warning that we haven't committed this release. At that point, we either need to commit the release or cancel it. So you commit the release and come back to the PO. If we go into the PO settings window, you can see now that this release total is showing us the total number of releases that we've created. Creating a receipt works exactly the same as creating a receipt for a regular purchase order in GP. Um, you, you can use the auto receive window, I'm just doing it manually here. So there's really no change here. This works exactly the same um, as it normally does with a purchase order. One thing I should point out over here is that if you've used that setup option to put the release number into the item description, it shows up in the item description next to each of these um, PO lines. Okay, so we'll post that PO receipt. And then when we go back to the purchase order, and come into our PO release. You can now see that this 32X IDE has a shipment recorded against it. There's one last thing we should take a look at, and that's printing a PO for a specific release. When you're in the PO release entry window, you can view the different releases that you've created by clicking the release number dropdown and selecting the release. In this case, we're going to print release number five, so it should have these two line items on it. From the blanket PO entry window, click the print button, then select the release you want to print. You can also print a PO containing just the control lines. And as you can see, the PO printed with just the line items for release number five. If you'd like to learn more about this product or any of the other Willowware software, please visit us at willowware.com or send us an email at sales at willowware.com.